Hello viewers, you are welcome to the Quantity Surveying Academy. Today, I have produced a proof plan for the floor plan we've been using all this while. As you can see, this is my beautiful design, beautifully designed roof plan. I hope you like it. If you like it, just tell me what you think about this design in the comment section below. And if you would want me to teach you how to just um, easily construct each and every one of these kind of architectural plan as simple as possible as in fact just let me know in the description box below and i'm going to know what to do about it in our subsequent videos if you are new to this channel subscribe to our channel and also click on the notification button to get notified of subsequent videos just do that by clicking the bell icon if you haven't joined our membership yet make sure you do so as fast as possible for as low as 600 naira which is equivalent to about 3.3 dollar wherever you are in the world so make sure you join our membership and also like our videos now moving down to this this is actually one of the most exclusive video you can actually see on youtube a lot of people that have been discussing things about estimation taking off and stuff like that but none of them would be able to give you as much value as what you'll be getting from our video so make sure you stick to the end of this video to understand every single thing i'll be discussing about roof and this is the roof plan of this floor plan here so this is our floor plan we've been using it for quite some time now you can see a distance from here to here that's the width of the plan is 7075 and the length is giving us 11675 the same thing applies to this roof plan so for your roof plan this is a gable roof this is not um, a very complex roof this is just a normal gable roof it falls to this side and to the other side so it has to fall so a single um a single pitch roof with gable ends so this is a pitch roof that has um double gable ends and it falls to two sides just take note of that now this is very very simple to construct but the thing is a lot of students do not really know how to measure this kind of roof and once you can't measure this kind of roof you won't be able to measure the complex one so you have to start from this and in order to start from this i've actually created this video to help you understand every single aspect of taking off quantities for roof now these dotted lines you can see on this roof plan represent the plan the floor plan itself that is why you can see that the distance dimension from this point to this point as stated on the roof plan is 7075 which is the same as the width of our floor plan so the dotted line anytime you see a roof plan and you see any dotted line like this the dotted line is simply indicating the floor plan itself why this other projection that is stated as 600 600 is simply what we call in fact this is a projection you have away from the building itself you know when you have um let me do this at the back of a let's do this this way so when you have a building this way you know you've seen this building most of the time when you have a building this way don't mind me i'm going to do this as fast as possible you can notice that the roof usually projects out of the wall now this projection the distance between the wall to this projection is what if there is let me let me draw this so that we can understand now, the distance from this projection this is the wall here the distance from this wall to this particular last element of the roof is what we refer to as this projection and it is usually 600 the same thing applies to this place so take note of that when you have a building this way this spacing this projection is 600 that is what is indicated on the floor plan as 600 and since you are dealing we are dealing with gable gable roof this is how gable roof used to look like a pitch roof with gable end since we are dealing with it the wall is not going to also commence the wall is not going to commence from the edge here the wall will start from somewhere around here so you can see there's going to be a projection of 600 of 600 away from the wall and also the same thing happens to this place 600 away from the wall that is why we have 600 away from each part of the wall so take note of that that is what this simply indicates in case you see your roof plan next time at least you should be able to understand what is there 
Now, when you look at your roof plan this way, mind you, you can't calculate for all items in this particular um, roof using this roof plan alone. Many people have done a lot of blunders using these numbers. But let me show you something. If I decide to open up this particular roof plan and display a section, this is what we we'll have. And this is a building that is showing us how the roof is to be constructed. This is simply a roof carcass. As you can see, it's a gobble end. That is why it's like this. So this is a roof carcass. Now, let me pick out one of these truss and explain before I can tell you more about what we are seeing here. Take a look at this truss. This is what we have. Now, this single truss here is what we have here. This is called a truss. This truss composed of different elements. The longest element that determines the height of the roof is called your king post. Please begin to take note of this. This element here, this one here, is called your king post. So the king post is the longest vertical element that determines the height of the roof itself for the pitch roof with gable ends. Now these other elements we are seeing here are called the struts. You can see we have them here, struts. The struts are these elements we have here. So we have a diagonal strut, or you can call it a slanting strut. Then we have a vertical strut. So these are the two types of struts we have. They can be diagonal, they can be vertical, but they are all called struts. Now we have this particular long wood that spans from this place to this place. It's what we refer to as our tie beam. So the tie beam is responsible for making sure it enhances rigidity between this wood that slants this way. And I'm going to tell you what these woods are right away. So this is your tie beam from this place to this place. Your tie beam is usually nailed on your wall plate. I didn't display it here. So you see, we would have one wall plate here, another wall plate here. So your tie beam is usually linking these two wall plates together. The wall plate is actually holding a tie beam in place. So we have our king post. The strut this is the tie beam, and then we have the wall plate that are not displaying. I will show you the wall plate right away. Then this slanting span that we have outwardly, I refer to as the rafters. So this is our rafter. So take note of it. This is your rafter. If you want to cram, you can just write this and paste it close to the wall of your bed. Every morning you wake up, glance through it, and you definitely grab it. I assure you of that. Make sure you get to know all. The, you can't measure or calculate for this item without knowing them so this is your king post these are your struts we have this long span as the tie beam then we have our rafter there are two rafter in each truss two rafter one king post in each truss we have one tie beam and then there will always be two wall plates in each truss take note of that now this one i drew out with red um, pen uh, called a pole line so I can call it a polling. I don't know how you intend pronouncing it. Let us just use it as polling for now. So this is a, this, this is a polling, and the polling are actually the last wood that receives the roof covering. So it's on this polling that the roof covering are being laid. Take note that the spacing, the usual spacing for your normal um, this for your normal long span aluminium roof would be 900. So the spacing between this polling to this polling would be 900. But in some cases, with the emergence of most of these new fabricated roofs, the distance between these pole lines have been reduced to 600. But when you're using your normal long span aluminum roof, make sure it's 9900 just so you don't have to waste too many materials. Now look at it. We have um, this thing, 50 by 75. This is telling you the spec of the wood. Hardwood, this is hardwood timber pole line at 900 mm center to center. This means center to center. So when you see something like this, it simply tells you that the spacing of each of these pole lines are 900. Take note of that. That means from this place to this place is 900, 900, 900. So the distance between each pole line will be 900. That is what this simply indicates. Now we have 50 by 150 mm hardwood rafter at 1 to center to center. This cannot be represented in this place. The only thing that is represented in this truss is the fact that we know that this is our rafter. But the spacing for rafters are not always shown. Take note, the spacing for rafter, for your struts, for your king post, and your tie beam are always the same. That is why, if you notice, 
if you move down to strut king pose and tie beam there is no need to indicate that it's at 1200 center to center this is why we have it that way this is one of our this, this is a rafter as you can see these are two other rafter on a different truss this is one truss this is another truss so when you have your rafter being stated to be at 1200 center to center it simply means that the distance from this truss to this next truss is one two this is important because we will use this value to calculate the number of rafters or the number of king poles or the number of trusses that are available in this building so if the rafter is at one two center to center your king post and the strut would also be at one two center to center so take note of this information so i've explained what those things are you can see this is how they are represented this is how they are constructed in the real building you construct a strut you construct another truss again so on and you continue to constructing the trusses as long as there are space as the spacing is still available until you have exhausted all the space for this illustration i just created two trusses because there is no much space to draw another one now if you notice the pole line are being laid across the trusses all together so you can see the pole line spans from here to this place along the length of the building why the trusses span along the width of the building so take note of this information these are the pole lines these are how they are always nailed to the trusses and your roof covering will now come upon them this way so that water can flow downward so i mentioned king pose rafters pole lines and the rest now we have our rich cap you can't see the rich cap here the rich cap is actually a roof covering that is always placed at after you must have nailed your roof sheet your roofing sheet there's always a roof covering that is kept that is placed at this place we we'll nail the roof covering around this place to cover the space that will be left from the two falls you know when you put your roof this way and put another roof this way there will be a tiny hole or a tiny space left at this place this is what i mean when your roof falls towards this place and falls towards the other side there will be a tiny space at this place so we usually put a rich cap it looks like a cap we wear it into this particular top to cover the space that will be left open so that water doesn't get into the building so that's what we refer to as a rich cap and then we have the lock span um the long span tie roof roofing sheets i didn't include the sheets here so we have to measure for that that is a roof covering what the, that final beautiful finish you see on the roof that that that's that, that's the only thing you can see on the roof it covers the entire carcass so that's going to be the long span ties roofing sheet then last but not the least we have the 300 by 3600 facial and batch board now this is our facial board when you are working with a building that has a pitch roof that has gable end most of the time it is advisable to introduce your facial board so we have a facial board here then we have a verge board at this side so this can be called a verge board you can call it your verge board or you can call it your badge board whichever the case may be they are still correct so it can be verge board or badge board this is where it is situated at this triangular side what we have they are always the same the material for badge board badge board is the same with the material for facial board but in order to separate what you're talking about the one at this place that has a triangular shape or that has the gable end is called the badge or the badge board why the one at this long span the length of the building is what we refer to as the facial board so take note of that i say this is the facial board these are our pole lines this long wood we have here is a king pose and we have more than one king pose in the building but one king pose per truss this entire carcass here is called a truss this is another truss now in this truss we have two rafters one king pose we have our diagonal struts and our vertical strut then this is our tie beam and this is the wall plate i've been talking about the wall plate spans across the length it is on the wall plate that your tie beam is nailed so your tie beam is nailed to the wall plate along this length and to the other wall plate along the other length so we have just two wall plates in our building as much as you are dealing with a gable and pitch roof you only have two wall plates all you need to do is to calculate the length of your wall plate but we have more than two tie beam the tie beam is dependent on the number of trusses that are available in this structure so that's that for um our uh, 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 roof you can see this is a plan view this is the plan of our roof this is the front view and 
to get the height of your king pose you just need to come down to your elevations and pick the height of the roof this is the height of the roof in case you don't understand this because many students are not are not accustomed to seeing this kind of structure this is the side view of the building so from this side view the height of the building is 3.2 while the height of the roof is 1.8 so you can just pick the height of your king post from this place so these are the entire items you need to get familiar with to be able to fully and effectively carry out your measurement for roof work in your um at a quantity surveyor so we just need to know all these things i'm going to be doing the measurement itself the taking off proper but the taking off is going to be exclusively meant for the members of this channel so if you want to have access to the taking off for this particular um, roof plan make sure you click on our join button i'm going to link it down in the description box below click on the join button and become a member of this channel to be able to assess the video on how to take off quantities for roof so this is just an introduction to taking off quantities for roof when you join our membership you'll be able to get access to the videos that we're producing for the taking off proper for this particular segment of um of our of taking off so if you uh if you are not clear with any part of this video just leave a question in the comment section below don't forget to subscribe to this channel like this video share it with your friends and also become a member of the Quantity Surveying Academy to gain access to exclusive videos that we're producing subsequently. Thank you for your time.